This is just one of the many villages in Maharashtra which waits for a tanker for its daily supply of water that most necessary yet most rapidly dwindling resource. Moreover, there are other areas where this source of water is unavailable. <laughs> There are 20 tankers providing water to 30 to 40 villages in this region every day. In Ahmednagar district alone, there are 300 to 350 water tankers. The situation is very bad here. This year, it was the worst ever. People are in great despair. In fact, we don't even know where to get the water from. And yet, there are people with memories of a very different past. When I was young, there was a dense forest here. People could not even walk through them. But eventually, they destroyed the forests completely. And especially, since the drought of 1972, they are suffering very hard time. Three years of severe drought compelled the people to cut down trees make charcoal and sell it in the market to survive whichever way they could. Due to repeated failure of rains and continued drought, the wells started getting dry. So the rich, those who had the money, could afford to dig wells by spudding bow wells and bringing water from deep underground. The poor had no money and they could dig no wells, so they had no access to water. While wells become deeper and deeper, hand pumps become mere playthings for children. I am digging this well to irrigate my field. We have to dig at least 40 feet to get water. I will cultivate here wheat, sugarcane and sorghum. Due to repeated drought, people began to overexploit their land resources in order to earn a living. They began to cut the trees and began to cultivate their lands intensively. This led to overexploitation depletion of land resources, this gradually led to the land becoming a desert. As a result of this, the income from the fields started going down and the land could no longer sustain such a large number of people. And people had to look out for an alternative source of income and livelihood. So people had to migrate and they left their villages for the towns and cities. The education of the children suffers and the living conditions are horrific, in fact almost inhuman but there is hardly any alternative. A degraded environment means an impoverished people, poor people. This was once land covered by forest, but relentless exploitation of land resources, along with adverse natural conditions like the massive 1972 drought, have left this land increasingly eroded, denuded and desertified, making the very survival of the people of this land difficult. This degradation needs not only to be stopped but reversed if the delicate thread between man and environment is not to be broken irrevocably, if the planet is to be given a chance to recuperate and replenish itself, if the people are to be empowered to initiate and sustain their own development. But is that possible? 
since watershed work began water in the wells has increased earlier we didn't have water to drink in the last 10 years this is the first time that we are seeing so much water in our village water availability is increased and we don't need tankers anymore irrigation too has increased earlier we cultivated only pearl millet since the water table has increased we are growing onion cotton tomatoes and grafted mangoes all this has been made possible by watershed development now there is sufficient water not only for drinking but also for irrigation in fact mendwan which never had water in summer is now supplying drinking water to the neighboring villages the agriculture situation has also changed before they used to take only one crop now they take a variety of crops like wheat onions tomatoes and other vegetables milk production has increased formerly they used to produce only 20 liters per day now they are producing 1000 liters a day income levels have also changed the houses which were usually made of mud and thatch have been pulled down in many cases and have been replaced by houses of brick and cement before there used to be only two or three cycles now there are at least 15 motorcycles in addition to television sets and other consumer goods things have changed and above all hope has increased people believe they have a better tomorrow this is the story of 318 villages covering an area of over 260000 hectares in maharashtra and andhra pradesh the villagers assisted by the watershed organization trust and its partner ngos have successfully attempted to restore the environment to its past glory through community work they have raised the water table increased the forest cover enhanced self reliance and raised the standard of living without the use of any expensive machinery or technology father herman baka has been in maharashtra since the last 50 years he is to help farmers dig wells sink bore wells build lift irrigation schemes and other such water harvesting structures the focus was on extracting water from every available source however due to frequent droughts the ground water tables had started declining alarmingly and the wells had started getting dry he began to realize that unless one recharged the sources of water water itself namely unless one recharge the wells recharge the ground water aquifers recharge and revitalize streams and rivers there wouldn't be much water left around for long he hit upon the idea of doing watershed development to trap and harvest rain water on a ridge to valley basis in order to make water available year round to all the people living in a particular area this simple idea gave birth to the quiet revolution taking place in the villages in maharashtra and andhra pradesh watershed development is the treatment of the entire catchment area around the village to ensure conservation and regeneration of all its natural resources especially water in 1989 father baka began motivating people to undertake watershed development he took them to a village in the aurangabad district which had successfully implemented a watershed project amala abhyasa sakala when we visited the mura dam together with social center a voluntary agency we were very impressed with the prosperity there and some amongst us began to say why don't we sell our dry lands and purchase two or three acres of irrigated lands here what a good time these people are having and then i asked myself how is it that these people are so fortunate and where did this water come from is it because the rain fell directly into the dam no in fact the rainwater flowed from the whole catchment into the reservoir and that's when we realized that if we too harvested the rainwater in our catchment we too could become prosperous and that is when the watershed development project really took off in our village watershed development must be done from a ridge to valley basis right from the top you dig continuous contour trenches as you come lower on wastelands you dig continuous contour bunds on farmlands you erect farm bunds along the drainage line on the rivers right from the top 
You do gully plugs as you come lower down, nullabunds, gabion structures and check dams. The idea is to control soil erosion and to control the flow of gushing water. Water that is running, we try to make it walk. Walking water, we stop. Stopped water, we try to force it underground. The idea is to trap and harvest and store rainwater wherever it falls, within the area itself. Since the speed of rainwater is controlled and the soil is not washed away, the rivers do not get flooded or silted. Thus, watershed development is an answer to two problems, that of drought and that of flooding. Earlier efforts of watershed development concentrated merely on water harvesting structures and ignored treating the watershed as a whole. This led to soil erosion and therefore siltation of the structure. Sand and silt come with the water flow and collect in the reservoir. This reduces their storage capacity. Such big structures without other soil conservation measures and land treatment become useless. No, we cannot construct check dams without first treating the upper catchment. Even we never did that. First from the top, we take continuous contour trenches. Then lower down, we construct continuous contour buns and then gabions and finally check dams. After constructing the continuous contour trenches, that is CCTs, we refill them and plant trees and various types of grasses in them. Where there are gullies, we construct gully plugs which stop the soil and allow water to pass. Earlier, the various government departments, namely the forest department, Department of Soil Conservation and Department of Social Forestry would largely work in isolation, hardly involving either the local people or even each other. As a result of this, people were not able to benefit to the fullest extent possible from the various activities and measures undertaken. What Father Barker did was to change this way of functioning. He contacted all the departments and brought them together with the local political establishment so that a consensus could be evolved as to what is to be done, by whom, when and how in regard to treating a particular watershed. As a result of this, the people benefited greatly because treatments were undertaken in a comprehensive, integrated and concerted fashion. The Forest Department now works in tandem with the Village Forest Protection Committee with whom a MOU has been signed. The benefits of the forest now accrue to the villagers for which they undertake the responsibility of protecting and maintaining the forest. This pattern of functioning has now been called the Sangamner pattern because that is where it originated and it is now being replicated in various districts of Maharashtra in regard to watershed development. While there have been other schemes of poverty alleviation through environmental regeneration, this has been the first large-scale approach where people were not mere beneficiaries but actual owners and implementers of the project. They helped themselves by regenerating the environment they lived in. Watershed development can only succeed if people are fully involved and there is absolutely no alternative to watershed development. Without cooperation of the entire village, this work cannot be done. Just four to five people cannot do it. Now all the people are cooperating and the oneness of the people creates the watershed and the watershed by itself again gives the people a sense of unity. In the beginning, people feared that this work would lead them into debt. But when it came to our notice, we explained to them that there was no loan or any sort of things involved in this. In fact, if we come together and work together, we will all stand to benefit. Specialists like engineers are not necessarily needed for watershed development. Even villagers with some training can do this work. For example, marking of contour lines with hydro marker. People's participation can become a mere slogan if it does not empower people with the authority, resources and most of all the ownership of the developmental project. And that is where self-help groups 
and the village watershed committee comes in. Elected by the villagers, it has representation from women, landless and lower caste members of the village. The village watershed committee, that is the VWC, is in charge of the planning, implementation, management of resources including finance, manpower and maintenance of the project. Ever since we have put a fine on free grazing in the treated areas, nobody leaves their cattle free or cut the trees anymore. Men don't take this ban very seriously, but we women get together, go to the spot and warn them not to graze their cattle or else to pay the fine. We have to provide options to people to improve their quality of life. For instance, we have helped people replace their poor quality cattle with high yielding varieties of cows. Previously, a person with 10 cows got only 5 litres of milk per day. Today, a person with one cow gets 20 litres of milk. I got a loan for the crossbreed cows from the cooperative. Now, cows are 10% local and 90% superior breed. Local varieties give hardly any milk, not worth going into business with them. Plantation work has provided grass which we cut and feed to our cattle. Once the VWC and its subcommittees impose a ban on grazing and cutting trees to prevent soil erosion, they also ensure equitable shramadan, that is, voluntary labor, equal to 20% of the unskilled labor cost of the project. This shramadan excludes the landless and single parent households. This is not just a financial contribution of the villagers towards the project, but a key ingredient in building up a sense of ownership and collective responsibility. The VWC also prevents the cultivation of water-intensive crops like sugarcane and sinking of bore wells to prevent the water table from going down. As the groundwater level increased, people started digging bore wells. This reduces the availability of drinking water in the wells. So we have to control excessive digging of bore wells. The VWC facilitates other developmental schemes in the village in the fields of sanitation, health, housing and employment generation. There are 187 women in this poultry project that we have started three months back. We have already sold the first batch. Till now, we have sold 293 chicks. We write letters to other women groups who buy the chicks at rupees 40 each. Initially, 10 of us put in our own money to start a nursery. Then the NGO reimbursed us. We planted some saplings and now we take turns to water and look after them. We will sell them for a forestation work in the watershed project. The women take care of the hens themselves. Every day they take turns to feed them and give them medicines. It has been 12 months since we have started a saving credit group. Earlier, we used to have problems whenever we needed money. We have formed a group of 20 women. Each member contributes 10 rupees monthly. We lend money to the members who are in need and charge 2% monthly interest. These are the members of the Women's Committee or Mahila Mandal who along with the VWC act in close collaboration with the NGO working for regeneration of the environment under the Indo-German Watershed Development Program. The 15 members village watershed committee of Bhoire Khurd and the NGO have a joint bank account. Money is withdrawn from this account according to the expenditure incurred in the work and is spent jointly by the committee and the NGO. 
समिति नेमले पंद्रह लोक during the past two weeks, we have treated the area of 23 hectares at the expense of 251,000 rupees. It does not take long to spend money, but it should be used properly. It matters to us if we misplace even 10 paise. Perhaps it won't surprise anyone now that the people of Pimpergao have started their own NGO to implement watershed programs in the nearby villages. Our VWC thought, why don't we start an NGO and implement watershed project ourselves? So we had meetings and registered an NGO and started working in our neighboring village. This has been made possible not only because of the availability of funds, but because, especially, people got together, worked together and made it all possible. In fact, some of these villages, which have been assisted by WOTR, now no longer need any support from outside agencies. They have acquired confidence, developed their own technical skills and have accumulated funds for maintenance. They have become self-sustaining. Without watershed development, we will not be able to eradicate poverty in Maharashtra.